In this lesson, we're going to look at the basics of fractions. This will include simplifying fractions, finding equivalent fractions, and finding fractions of an amount. A fraction tells us how many parts of a whole we have, and they're made up of two parts. The top number in the fraction is called the numerator. That tells us the number of parts that we have. Then the bottom number is called the denominator, and that tells us how many parts we're splitting the whole into. Now, to begin with, we're going to consider the pictorial representation of a fraction, and this should be prior knowledge. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and give yourself maybe two or three minutes to match each diagram with their fraction. Remember, with questions like this, we're writing down the fraction of the shape that is shaded. Now, some diagrams might have more than one fraction that matches with them, and I'd like you to think about why that is. And you might also find that some diagrams have no fractions, so I'd like you to write the corresponding fraction. Now, if this doesn't ring a bell with you, feel free not to pause the video and just watch the upcoming explanation. So now, hopefully you've had enough time to match each diagram with their fraction. Let's begin with the very first diagram. It's a square, and we have six out of a potential nine squares shaded. And so we could say that this fraction is equal to six ninths, but there's no fraction six ninths in our column on the right. So what else could we match it to? Well, if we consider each row in our square, we see that they are identically shaded. We have two out of a potential three squares in each row shaded. And so we could say that this is the same as two thirds. We'll now consider the second diagram. In this diagram, we have four circles out of a possible eight shaded. And so we could say that that's equal to four eighths. But actually, we could consider this in a slightly different way. We can say that one out of every pair of circles, one out of every two, is shaded. And so we could actually match this with the fraction one half. We'll consider why this representation has two matching fractions in a moment. For now, let's move on to the third example. We have a circle that's equally split into three parts. It's split into thirds, and one of these parts is shaded, so this is equal to one third. Our next example is a circle as well. This time we have three out of a potential eight shaded. Now, we do need to be really careful here. We have three out of a total of eight. We don't want to take three out of five, which would be the unshaded section. And here you might have noticed that there is no fraction three eighths in our row. So we can add three eighths anywhere we like to describe this fraction. We'll move on to the rectangle. In this rectangle, there are a total of five equal squares. So we can say that each square is one fifth of the rectangle. And since we have three shaded, we have three fifths of the rectangle shaded. Then in our next rectangle, we have four out of a potential 10 shaded. And there is another way to represent this, and we'll consider that in a moment. And then we go back to another example involving identically sized circles. Out of a potential 12 circles, we have nine shaded. So we could say that nine twelfths of this diagram is shaded but there are no 9 twelfths fractions here. And so we're going to instead think about each row. Each row in this diagram is identical, and it's made up of four circles of which three are shaded. So we can say that three quarters of this diagram is shaded. And so we've now answered all of the questions, and hopefully this was just a recap for you. Now, moving forward, we're going to consider those diagrams which had more than one fraction matched with them. And we're going to think about why that was. For example, one of the fractions we looked at was four eighths, and we saw that it was also represented as one half. Similarly, we had six ninths as being equal to two thirds. We say that these fractions are equivalent. In other words, they're exactly the same. In each pair of fractions, the fraction which has the smaller numbers on the numerator and denominator are in their simplest form. And so how do we write a number in its simplest form? Well, to write a fraction in its simplest form, we look to divide both parts by the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator. 
In other words, we divide both parts by the largest number that divides exactly into both of them. If, for example, we look at 4 eighths, we see we can divide both 4 and 8 by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, and so 4 eighths simplifies to 1 half. Similarly, both 6 and 9 can be divided by 3. That's the highest common factor of the two numbers. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 6 ninths simplifies to 2 thirds. And so if you're making notes at this point, you could write down the following. To simplify a fraction, we divide the numerator and denominator by their highest common factor. And we'll now simplify 10 fifteenths. We know that both 10 and 15 can be divided by 5. That's their highest common factor. 10 divided by 5 is 2, whilst 15 divided by 5 is 3. And so 10 fifteenths simplifies to 2 thirds. Now sometimes it won't be instantly obvious what the highest common factor of our values are, so we might just have to divide more than once. Take 28 over 52 for instance. It might not be instantly obvious what we need to divide by, but we can see that both 28 and 52 are even numbers, so we can divide through by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14, and 52 divided by 2 is 26. Then we see that both 14 and 26 are also even, so we divide both parts by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 26 divided by 2 is 13. And so 28 over 52 simplifies to 7 thirteenths. Now of course this is in fact the same as originally dividing by 4, but the final result is identical, so it really doesn't matter if you take more than one step. And at this stage, you might be wondering how we know that we've finished. Well, 7 and 13 are co-prime. And what that means is they share no other factors other than 1. Once we reach a position where both the numerator and denominator are co-prime, then we're finished. Let's do a few more together. You've got two options at this point. You can either pause the video now and work through each one in turn. Or alternatively, you could pause the video after each question, give it a go, and then press play to check every answer in turn. Let's begin by simplifying 4 tenths. So, the highest common factor of 4 and 10 is 2. So we can divide both part by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now simplify 6 27ths. This time, we notice that 6 and 27 aren't both even, and so we're not going to divide through by 2. But their highest common factor is in fact 3, so we're going to divide both part by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 27 divided by 3 is 9. So this simplifies to 2 ninths. Simplify 7 over 21. The highest common factor of 7 and 21 is 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 21 divided by 7 is 3. So 7 over 21 is equal to 1 third. Simplify 30 fiftieths. Both 30 and 50 are divisible by 10. 3 divided by 10 is 3, and 50 divided by 10 is 5. Simplify 36 over 45. Well, both 36 and 45 are divisible by 9, and when we simplify, we get 4 fifths. The final example is a challenge question, and it says 1 third is equal to what over 12? Well, this time we should spot that 12 divided by 3 is 4. So if we multiply 3 by 4, we get 12. And if we do that to the denominator, we have to do it to the numerator. 1 times 4 is 4, and so 1 third is equal its equivalent to 4 twelfths. You're now going to take some time and do some colouring. I'd like you to look at the simplifying fractions colour by number sheet. You're going to simplify each fraction on this resource and then use the key to fill each space in the relevant colour. Enjoy this and when you're done, come back here for the next part of the lesson.
The next part of this lesson is quite quick. We're just going to look at equivalent fractions, and earlier we said this means the same, and we said that four eighths and one half are equivalent. We also saw that to get from four eighths to one half, we divide both the numerator and denominator by four. But in fact, we don't always divide. We can actually multiply the numerator and denominator to create equivalent fractions. What we can't do is add or subtract from those numbers, and so it's essentially about scaling. Let's take, for example, the fraction three quarters. How many equivalent fractions can we find? Well, we could multiply both parts of this fraction by two. Three times two is six, and four times two is eight, and so three quarters is equivalent to six eighths. Now, you might be wondering how we know that these are equivalent, how we know that they're the same. And actually, this is because if we multiply both the bottom and the top number by two, we're multiplying by two over two, which is the same as multiplying by one. And if we multiply by one, that doesn't change the number itself. So what else could we have multiplied by? Well, we could multiply both bits of this fraction by three. 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 3 is 12, so 3 quarters is equivalent to 9 twelfths. What other numbers could we choose? Well, in fact, as long as we do the same to both the numerator and the denominator, and as long as we only multiply or divide, we can in fact create an infinite number of equivalent fractions. For instance, we could multiply both parts by 11. 3 times 11 is 33, and 4 times 11 is 44, and so we've created another equivalent fraction. Let's now consider two-fifths. I'd like you to have a go yourself at finding as many equivalent fractions as you can for this number. And you're going to pause the video for, say, 60 seconds and list as many as you can find. So, welcome back. Did you find any of these? If so, great, but if you have any that aren't on the list, one way you can check if they are right is by popping them into a scientific calculator and pressing equals. Your calculator will automatically simplify this back to the original fraction, back to two fifths. And so that will tell you if you've chosen the right equivalent fraction. So we're now going to move on to the final topic, and that is finding a fraction of an amount. Now, to develop a technique, we're going to begin by recalling how we find, say, half of a number. If we want to find half of 12, we know that's the same as dividing 12 by 2, which gives us 6. Similarly, what do we do to find a quarter of a number? Well, to find a quarter of, say, 16, we're going to divide 16 by 4, which gives us an answer of 4. Similarly, to find a third of a number, we divide it by 3. So a third of nine is nine divided by three, which is three. To find a fifth of a number, we divide by five. So a fifth of 20 is 20 divided by five, which is four. But what do we do if we have, say, three fifths of a number? In this case, three fifths of 20. Well, we just saw that one fifth of 20 is equal to four. We have three of these, so we have three lots of four, which is equal to 12. And we therefore see that three fifths of 20 is equal to 12. And so we can say that to find three fifths of 20, we begin by dividing 20 by the denominator, that's 20 divided by five, to give us four. And then we take that value and we multiply it by the numerator. In general, to find a fraction of an amount, we divide the number by the denominator and then multiply that new number by the numerator. Divide by the bottom times by the top. Take, for example, two sevenths of 42. We begin by dividing our number 42 by the denominator or the bottom of our fraction. That's seven. 42 divided by seven is equal to six. Then we take this value, that's six, and we multiply it by the numerator. Six times two is equal to 12. Essentially, what we're doing is we're finding the value of one seventh, and then we're doubling that to find the value of two of these. And so two sevenths of 42 is equal to 12. And so now we have that technique, I'd like you to go into the fractions lesson one, introduction to fractions, and have a look at the collector joke. The collector joke looks a little something like this. 
Now, if you've never seen one of these before, let's work through the first couple of questions together. Obviously, we start at the word start. And so our first letter is going to be W. And the question asks us to find a third of 15. Well, a third of 15 is going to be equal to 15 divided by three, which is five. And so let's find the tile that has the number five at the top of it. The five is here and there's a letter H. So our next letter is going to be H. We then find a fifth of 30. That's 30 divided by five, which is equal to six. And we find our tile with the number six on it. So that's the letter A. So you can now pause the video, continue in this manner. And when you come back, we'll have a look at what the joke is and we'll find the punchline. And so by now, hopefully you've had enough time to work out the joke. And the joke was, what did the triangle say to the circle? Do you know the punchline? The triangle said, you're pointless. Now, of course, I never said it was a funny joke. I can hear groans around the country as we speak. And so that brings us to the end of our lesson on the introduction to fractions. And hopefully we'll see you again soon.